Once your geometry is complete and precise with dimensions and OSNAPs, you are ready to extract line work and create a representation of your model. Remember that the composition of the views you take are just as important, if not more, than having the perfect model. Be sure that the perspective or drawing you take reinforces what you're trying to show, whether it be a detail of a joint, a perspective from the exterior, or a crucial section. Once you've found a descriptive view, be sure to go into your Named Views tab and save it. This is the most important step in making sure your render and line work match up. Once you've done that, select everything on your screen or type Cell All, then type Make 2D in the viewport of the chosen perspective. In general, it is a good idea to keep hidden lines, and I also usually check the Maintain Source Layers box if the drawing is complex and has a lot of line work. Hit Enter and Rhino will create a two-dimensional drawing in your top view that you can drag to a clear spot. Notice the hidden lines are white and that Rhino has duplicated all of the layers of your drawing under a Make 2D group. It can be useful to change some of the layer colors to make it easier to select and differentiate line work, but the majority of the editing should be done in AutoCAD. You can use the top and side views to get site plans and elevations, but if you need to cut through a building to get a first floor plan and multi-story building per se, or to take a section, you can use the section command. Select what you would like to cut through, then go to the top view and draw a line where you would like the section to cut through the building. You can create several at once, then pull them away from the building and make 2D from the side view. A clipping plane is a great tool to find an illustrative section. Just keep in mind that a clipping plane has to be enabled and disabled in each viewport separately. Highlight your line work in top view and then go to File, Export Selected. You'll want to save as a DWG to bring into AutoCAD. Let's leave that for a moment and click back into our saved view to render. First we need to create and apply appropriate materials to our forms. You can apply material by layer and click on the circle icon in your layers panel, or you can go to the top drop down menu, render, and choose material editor. This allows you to create and edit a material and then apply to selected rather than to an entire layer. You are going to add a material to work with and choose the white matte material in the render content folder. Open it, and we are going to make a couple edits. First off, some rendering engines have trouble understanding pure white because it does not technically exist in nature, so just to be safe we are going to click into the color and change the RGB down to 253, making a super light gray. Play with the values of the gloss finish, reflectivity, and transparency, and you can see the material preview change as you adjust these. Choose the geometry that you want to apply it to and right click the material and apply to select it. It is a good idea to test render as you go, so hit render, and we have not adjusted the resolution settings yet so it will not take long, and see what you got. From there we can see that the material looks pretty good, but it would be nice to see some shadows. Let's add in a point light and a ground plane to add some depth and context to our render. Go into top view and draw a quick cylinder encompassing your geometry. Make the depth a negative one and there's your ground plane. Next, let's insert a light. Under your render tools, find the point light, then go to your top view and place it some distance away from your geometry. Move it vertically in one of the side views and then click on your properties panel on the right. Here you have the ability to edit the color intensity, and shadow intensity for each individual light you insert. Let's lower the shadow intensity down to 70 for starters and leave the light white. If you'd like to see how the light interacts with the material, you can change the color of the light and do a test render to observe that. If when we render again the material has become washed out, we can lower the intensity of our light, change the reflectivity or glossiness of our material, or move the light further away. There is no perfect formula for rendering, and often a render is created and perfected through a series of incremental changes. Another thing you could do is to make the ground plane a different color, but a white background is the easiest to edit and make changes to in Photoshop. 
Once you've got a decent light balance, let's go into the render properties to make a couple more adjustments. We can make the color a dark gray and then the bottom color a lighter gray. Try different settings and see which work best for your render. And finally, let's change the output to a higher resolution, which will ensure that your render is crisp and clean even without the line work. 300 dpi and changing the resolution to 3200 by 2400 and upping the anti-aliasing is a good idea for final renderings, but keep in mind that the higher res will cause the program to take much, much longer to render, depending on the complexity of your geometry. Once you're all set, render your project and save the result as a JPEG or PNG to be taken into AutoCAD and combined with your line work. Scale your line work and your rendered image to match up, then edit your line weights and hierarchy in AutoCAD, and print a PDF.